Hi, everyone. Rusty Dunn here with my good friend, time traveling, digging into history colleague, corporate heritage archives manager, Lee Fosberg, picking up the story of the diesel engine at Caterpillar. Of course, we're celebrating, Lee, our 90th anniversary of the diesel engine. And in part one, of course, taking us through the idea for us, the R&D effort that had to take place. And finally, getting us up to, and I hope I get my year right, we're in about 1930, 1931, where we're on the verge of having production models mm -hmm. with a diesel engine in it. That's right. Well, you know, even to backtrack a little bit, Rusty, right, we said this was right. There was a lot of adversity. There were a lot of issues. You got to remember, too, we're in 1930. We're in the Great Depression, right? Right. It started. The company was in a very serious commitment over a million dollars, which was a lot of money for that time period. One of the famous sayings is so there was a lot of pressure on Best to like scrap this, right? We're doing good. Why do we need a diesel engine? Right. One of the things I thought was very moving that Oscar Starr was, he said, you know, Best, people, his friends called him Leo. And the thing he used to always say is, Leo never gave up, ever from a fight and he would never back down. So, and Rosen would say that Best was the greatest cheerleader of this project. When we all wanted to give up, he was like, no way, we're moving on. And that's what Kat did. And so what that led to was in the very end of 1931, the first production model. Now, when we say production model, a little bit different than today, right? There wasn't, you would say, as much of the testing in the manufacturing process that we see today. So the first two machines, believe it or not, they were built by hand in San Leandro. The real production model, I would argue, went off the assembly line in Peoria, Illinois, where the, the rest of them came off the line. These were called 1C models. So 1C1 and 1C2, which I may add were painted gray because our machines used to be battleship gray. Right, so not the high, not the highway yellow yet. Right, but the and right this kind of spurned right. These machines were moving from agriculture to earth moving, and you see the third machine is yellow. All the machines off the Peoria line were yellow. So you would say this really kind of constitutes again another analogy we talked about: the old and the new. Right, the old cat being gray, the new cat the yellow that we know today, and this machine represents that. And I, I love your perspective of the, the seminal moment uh, and dealing with the pressure um, from others that we're spending too much money. We need to stick with what we know. But had that decision not been made and had we not pushed forward, we would to perhaps we'd be here today. We certainly wouldn't be the company we are here today. Yeah. So uh, the, the, these models come out um, and take it from there. And, and in terms of the production of these um, tractors with the diesel engine and them, the the did we we come out with a lot of them um, or was production limited? How did we approach that and start to get them into the marketplace and then customer reaction? Sure. Well, production was limited because the right an experimental machine and two to bring back even I I think w what we should also talk about why diesel right? Well, diesel fuel was half the price of gasoline. So that gave your a customer, right? Immediately they cut costs. The other thing, it had a very instant power to it, which really lent itself to earth moving and big jobs. So when they tested these, they tested them with the help of our dealers. Very select dealers would look at, sell these machines, and then they would monitor, as far as the R&D process, you yeah, would say, right, after right. the sale, how well they performed. And there were kind of on-the-job learnings then that were kind of constituted from this tractor to the next generation of these engines, which came out in 1933. But to tell you how rare these are, there's only 157 were ever made of these wow. original cat diesels. So, Lee, what if I'm sitting there, I've been a loyal Caterpillar customer, I'm happy with my gas-powered 60 um, but but I, I'd I'd love to have diesel uh, power for a number of reasons that we've talked about. The fuel is cheaper. Uh, what happens at that point uh, that, where we um, sort of had to take care of those customers who <laughs> yeah. want to go to diesel? Yeah. Well, think about this, Rusty. There were going back to the best days. There were over twenty thousand 
60s, gasoline 60s that were out there on the market, right? People loved these machines. It was the Cadillac machine, right? So Caterpillar, right, we've always been known for our aftermarket services, right? Even going back to Holton and Bass. Right. This was an example. So we made what you would call a conversion kit in 1935, where we marketed you could modernize your old 60, make it diesel, right? For, I think it was around $2,000, you could put this new engine in this machine and you would double its life. So it's, it's just sort of an early remake. It's sort of an early remanufacturing story. Yes, yes, right. Mean remanufacturing before there was ever formal remanufacturing. How, so how long would it take the the dealer mechanic, the certified dealer mechanic, to to take the kit and make the conversion? Happen? Sure. So it was, I find this amazing. It's anywhere from like uh, you know sixteen to to twenty hours for them to do this. And you know the the coolest thing about it is right. We talked about these machines. These old sixties were gray. Well, you put this yellow engine in them, so you would see this gray machine with this yellow engine. It, it, it was actually very dramatic. It's a it's a great aftermarket story. You're right. Yeah. So the kit, so the kit was actually sold with parts, with the parts book eventually. Then that that's right. right. It, it it was the whole deal, right? Once you got it put in, then you 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 had the parts book, and um, you know people use these all the way up to World War II. So there we are, no going back. And and when we think about the 90th anniversary uh, and the legacy. Talk about that a little bit. Put that in perspective in terms of the impact um, of the diesel idea and and then going forward from the 30s and on. Sure, Rusty. Well, you know, right, we used the analogy in the earlier video of this was the, the iPhone of the earth moving industry. I, I think these couple facts really kind of prove that out. One is really right, the engine came out at the end of 1931. By 1933, Caterpillar produced half the diesel horsepower in the United States. And by 1937, we were the largest diesel horsepower producing company in the world. Think about that. Incredible. Yeah. I mean, that's that's yeah. game changing. We literally put it on the map. Diesel that's engines right. on the map and, and it was a global map. Always a man who has no shortage of stories. Lee, I can't thank you enough for sort of um, telling this story of the diesel engine and um, doing it in two parts. It's that big of a story. So we really do appreciate it and um, look forward to uh, our next digging into history. So thank you. Thank you, Rusty. And to all of you, thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time.